All right, so uh, this is the another Patreon request, and this one comes from uh, John McKinney, who uh, asked me to do um, actually a fun one. It was actually kind of a one I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll try. I'll get to this ASAP. I will try to get to this um, as soon as possible. And um, John asked me. Uh, John McKinney asked me to do a crossover between Kim Possible and Terminator. So yeah, Kim Possible versus Terminator. Uh, probably inspired by the Termination story I did not too long ago. And as always, if you guys would like to have a Patreon request done, uh, just hit the link below, head on over to my Patreon where you guys can start sending me requests for videos uh, to do here on YouTube. Just hit, go to the link below, head on over there, and uh, you guys can start sending me requests for videos to do here on Patreon. And, I mean, YouTube. Bleh. Anyway, so let's get this, start, uh, this story uh, started. So this story takes place, um, I wouldn't say after the show's end, but I would say like somewhere season four-ish. Like we are in season four territory, and essentially... Um, what is going on in here is that we have our basic Terminator setup where um, Middleton has a disturbance. There's an electrical disturbance, and it's a Terminator coming back from the past. It's a, and for one, if you're wondering what model of Terminator we're going to be using for this uh, story, it's going to be a T-800. It is a T-800 model that is coming back from the past. I mean, come from, come back from the future and coming here to the past. Essentially, this T-800 is having the Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, look, and it immediately takes out a uh, it takes out someone takes their clothes, the, you know, the leather jacket and all of that, and begins its mission. And it has a it has a hit list. This Terminator was programmed to hunt down and destroy several key targets, and it's gonna do it. <laughs> So, meanwhile, while this is going on, uh, Wade has contacted KP, like, basically telling him, hey, there was some kind of weird disturbance last night, and it was, it was basically, like, fucking with all these different, like, uh, phones and whatnot, because this one was, like, pretty, this was pretty close, like, this one kind of caused a temporary distur energy disturbance, and no and everyone's kind of on edge about it because this would happen right in town and they're like and Ron and KP are like okay um, we don't really deal with that kind of stuff that seems more like a government thing and they're like well they're kind of asking you because it is in town could you they're kind of looking to you since you're the closest one there could you take a look and see what it is and she's like all right so Kim and Ron go and they basically um, they travel to the site and all they see is scorch marks there's nothing really there they do see footprints and um who what who or whatever it was definitely was pretty strong because they are like ripping through stuff and they're like whatever this was this is pr this is pretty big they also get a tip that there was a uh, gun store that was broken into and several weapons and ammunition what a lot of weapons and ammunition was taken and um, whoever it was also destroyed the security cameras. So they have no idea. Wade can't pull up anything. All he see, all he really got before the camera was destroyed was like a brief look at someone's hand coming up to the camera and just crushing it. So they're like, okay, this guy's a pro. And, and that's when Ron goes, time out. KP, I don't think we should do this. And she's like, Ron, it's nothing to be scared of. And he's like, do, do you not know what he just stole? He stole guns. We don't We've never really come up with someone uh, against someone who uses actual guns against us. Sure, lasers, robots, but no one ever used firearms on us. Like no one ever used firearms against us. And they're and she's like, Ron, it's fine. And Ron points out, the other thing is this guy, whoever this is, is in town. And I don't know what the whole thing about the scorches on the ground are, but this guy seems to be strong. He also probably knows his weapons. KP, this guy is dangerous. Like. We, maybe we should call in some backup. Maybe we should find some help with somebody and try to figure this out. Like, this seems way too dangerous. So K, uh, K, uh, so Kim is like, eh, it'll be fine. However, that's when... Um, that's when later that day she goes back home. Uh, Kim, uh, Kim goes back home, and that's when there's this knock at this big pounding at the door. And that's when... 
they see the term uh, the uh, Kim's mom opens the door and he's like is Kim possible here he's like yeah and he just pushes her through lo- uh, sees Kim raises the shotgun and just starts firing and that's when the first fight begins is that Kim and uh, Kim just fights this guy and she's like holy shit I'm actually getting shot at in my own fucking house because that was the thing like re- like pumping the brakes real quick that was always something that bothered me about Kim Possible is that all of her villains knew where she lived. Like, didn't that fuck with her just a little bit? Had to have fucked with her just a little bit that one of, like, Draken or someone could have come in at any point and just tried to kill her at any fucking point. So, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, that would have that would have bothered me if I was a superhero with a public identity. That, that um, <laughs> that would have bothered me to the nth degree, really. Like, that, that definitely would have, uh, that 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 would have disturbed me. That would have generally disturbed me. But anyway, so um, anywho, getting back on point is that yeah, Kim is making this horrible realization that whoever this is, they're good and they're attacking in my own home, and I could get my own family killed, and they're after me. So they fight. Her and the Terminator fight. Eventually, she actually like tries to punch him. She actually ends up like almost breaking her hand on this guy's chest. She goes for a high kick. The guy doesn't move. He grabs her and throws her. And and that's when Kim has to, like, go, like, a little, like, she has to fight a little bit harder. She has to fight just a little bit dirtier. Grabs, like, a knife and just, like, I need to, like, wound him or something. And just gets him in the side. He just pulls it out, no problem. Tries to get at her with the knife. She gets cut. She also gets shot in the shoulder by a pistol. And she takes off. Like, uh, Kim runs off and the terminator follows not that she doesn't realize yet that this is uh, like this is a machine um and she manages to get to ron's house after they hear the commotion that there was a fight at the possible house kim is there she's wounded she's like this guy was good this guy i don't know what this guy he must have been on something he must have been a professional assassin i don't know but this guy's tough like this guy is dangerous this guy knew how to fight me and when I, I stabbed him and not he, he didn't I don't even think he bled so he's either on something or he's just a professional so what they have to do is like okay one of your villains had maybe he's an assassin maybe one of your villains sent him to kill you like maybe that has to be the only explanation is that he's a trained assassin and one of your maybe Draken maybe someone else um sent him to take you out like that's the only logical explanation is that someone was sent to kill you. Someone had to have sent him whoever this assassin is to kill you. That's the only logical explanation to all of this is that it's really um, all a, a assassination attempt. So the first person they go to is Draken and Shigo and Draken's like, please, do you really think I would send someone to kill you? Um, no. <laughs> uh, Shigo wouldn't let me do that either. And that's when they're like, did someone try to kill you? Like, they, they track down Shigo and Draken just so they could try, like, Kim even, like, goes a little more aggressive on Draken and is like, you, that person came into my house and tried, almost killed my family, almost killed me. I am not going to be nice to you. And he's like, I didn't send anybody. So, I don't know what your problem is. So, Draken also is like, if this person is trying to kill my archenemy, I need to help. And whoever this is, they probably, like, I'm not letting them get Kim Possible. That's me. That's me. That's me. And she goes, ahem, that's me and Shigo who are meant to kill you. So we will assist you in finding out who or whatever this person is. Meanwhile, while this is going on, Wade gets attacked by the Terminator. And Wade has to escape his own house while the Terminator hunts him. And by this point, Kim Possible comes back, and her and Shigo um, both team up to fight the Terminator. Um, the Terminator is like, Shigo, you are not designated for termination. And they're like, Terminate? What the hell is that? And that's when uh, Kim, uh, um, Shigo, who's like, I've had enough of this shit, burns half of his face off. And they're like, Shigo, no! They burn off half of his face, and that's where it's revealed it's a robot. And they're, and they're like, you sure this wasn't Draken? They're like, that's not one of mine. Like, <laughs> Draken is like, that is not one of mine. I'm, uh, one of mine. Um, so the fight, um, the fight continues with Kim and Shio teaming up to t- to continue to literally battle the Terminator. 
um, uh, through just a brutal fight that takes through all the way through town and then leads to a construction site where um, while she goes distracting the Terminator, who she's burning off more of its skin and revealing more of the T-800 body, that's when they... Uh, Kim uses a cement truck to bury it in concrete um, up to the head, and that's when Shigo just like just kicks it with all of her full, with all of her might, and just energy charges her foot, and they're just kicking the thing's head clean off. And that's when Draken gets it, and he's like, "I wonder what this is all about." And she's like, "I want to know." <laughs> Kim is like, "Hold on, you're not running away with that head, first and foremost. You're gonna we're gonna find out why it came after me and who sent it after me." So, Draken accesses the dead T-800's file and discovers the Terminator from a future, and its orders were from the thing called Skynet. And he's like, Skynet? I thought that thing was shut, it was just mysteriously taken apart by its, in a Cyberdyne incident in the 90s. <laughs> so, Kim, so, Ron, so, Kim, Ron, Draken, and Shigo dig further and discover that the Terminator was sent from the future by Skynet in an attempt to take out Kim Possible because she was deemed a threat in the future and was one of the top lieutenants of someone named John Connor. And they're like, so at some point in the future, there's going to be a war between man and machine and you're going to help fight these machines in the future. And Wade was also on that kill list because he was also considered a threat by Skynet. And... They're like, why wasn't I considered a threat? And they're like, maybe you didn't make it, Ron. <laughs> and he's like, nah, I totally made it. Right? <laughs> but yeah, that's the whole thing, is that they that's they discover after the fact of why the Terminator was after them. Um, anyway, so there you go, guys. That is my uh, Terminator Kim Possible crossover. I'd like to thank John McKinney for uh, this video, for this Patreon request and continued patronage. And you guys tell me in the comments below, what did you guys think of this crossover? Did you guys like it, hate it? Comment below, let me know. And once again, if you guys would like to have a Patreon request done, just hit the link below. Head on over to my Patreon where you guys can start sending me requests for videos to do here on Patreon. But other than that, hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the Multiverse.